All right, we'll move on to 1.3, agenda adjustments. And we are going to move some things this evening. We're going to move 7.1, new business, and we're going to put that right after consideration of minutes. We will move 6.1 right after that. It'll be old business. And then we will go to public comment right after that. Those all take a motion and be approved by the board and change to the agenda. To uh, our policy. Okay. Do I have a motion that we move those agenda? For, do I have to do one for each? No. No, we can just you can have just one. Just one. A motion to change seven point one and then six point one, then leading into number three for public. Can you hear me? A second. Okay. <laughs> second. So my only so we're gonna what are we moving before public comment? We're going to you. We're going to do 7.1, new business first, and then we're going to do 6.1, which is old business, which will be a discussion of um, the budget, and then we will do three public comments right after that. So we're not going to do them after considering the mission according to policy. Correct. It was to give an opportunity for the public to respond to the budget conversation. I understand in the past, mm -hmm. past board yep. chairs of boys on subjects like that open it up to the public yep. individually, left public comments for comments about other types of things. And then whenever we had a major thing that we were discussing, once the board was done discussing it, we had opened it up to the public, let their comments, and then we'd go back to the board if they wanted to reconsider any information that came up with public comments. So you really separated the public comments for general things and then public comments for the particular article that you were working on separate so that they could be focused on all at once. So that has been the prior practice of the board for 20 years or more. As part of my motion, do we really think that any of the public is here to talk about anything other than the budget? I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that's a risk we could take just to move this along. So this I, set, I motion for the... 7.16. This was a decision that Jill made prior to my coming in today. It's a proposal she wanted to offer. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So do we have a second? We have a second. Okay. All right. So we'll do consideration of minutes, 2.1, to approve the minutes. Any Whoop. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Discussion. Any discussion? Bob had, a Bob had a discussion. I already had mine. Mm -hmm. Now I'll. Now, all in favor? You have to do a roll call. Oh. Roll call. Yeah, I have it right here. Yep. Scott? We're doing a roll call. No. Laura? Uh, no. Bob? No. Nicole? No. Brandon? No. Doug? This is for the motion, right? Yeah. Yes. Christy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jill? Sorry, we didn't get that. Yes. Thank you. Yes. We have a Jill. And yes for me. So it fails. So is there a could, motion on the Could floor? I make a motion to move seven point one um, before three? Which is the new business? 
Yep, and then we can move um, 6.1 to before 4. So do a public comment in between? Yep. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. Any discussion? Well, on a roll call again. And that is to move 7.1 to before public comment. Is that correct, Laura? Correct. And after public comment, we will do 6.1. All right, Scott? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bob? No. Nicole? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Doug? Yeah. Yes. Christy? No. Jill? Put in the chat. Do you see it? Jill is in the airport. So. Yeah. No. And I will say no. All right, it passes. Is it five to six? Five sixty-five to four thirty-six. Okay. All right, so we'll do uh, consideration of the minutes. Two point one to approve the minutes of the March twenty-seventh, two thousand twenty-four board of directors meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? My name is spelled incorrectly. Okay. Any more, any more discussion? All right, we'll do the roll. Scott? Yes. Laura? Um, I was not here, so I'm... Okay. Bob? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Doug? Yes. Christy? Yes. I say yes. Jill? Yeah. Jill, can you answer in the chat? She totally disappeared. She said yes. Oh, she said yes. Okay. We all set? Okay. All right, so we'll go down to 7.1, new business. To elect Lynn McLean as the school counselor for grades 1, two and five as recommended by the superintendent of schools. So moved. Second. All right, we'll do the roll. Scott. Uh, oh, discussion. discussion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm new to this. Got to have patience. discussion. There might not be any, but you got off. <clears throat> and we uh, do have Lynn. I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I don't have a question regarding your um, electee, but why one, two, and five? Why they, where's the gap? Those are two different schools, so. Katie? Yes, yeah. so um, it's shared. So Jen Waterman has been covering the whole middle school because we haven't had one. So it's sharing that with SPS and the middle school. So if that's how it have, was laid out in when there was movement mm -hmm. around Sabatis Primary and Oak Hill Middle School. So does that mean Jen is now gonna just do six through eight? I think they'll meet as a team and decide, okay. you know, because she has certain caseload right now, so there'll be students that okay. we can discuss. Thank you. So, so I have a question. What brought you to RSU 4? I warned her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. coughs> can I take it out? Yeah, pull up a chair. Oh, no, no, I don't want to pull up a chair. Um, I actually grew up right here in Savatis, and my name was Lynn Tebow then. Um, I know Kathy. We went to elementary school together. But um, I am a graduate of Oak Hill High School, and for a long time I was working down in southern Maine, but my life has brought me back home to the Lewis and Auburn area, and I'm very excited to be hopping back into working with kids. Uh, most recently I was in Falmouth working in their staff childcare, 
with preschoolers for nine years. And I really, really enjoyed that, but I really needed to get back home. And I feel really excited to be um, right here and ready to jump in as soon as vacation is over. That's what brought me back. All right, thank you. Another Oak Hill graduate success story. That's right. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Should I hold the microphone or am I done? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for me? <laughs> you know where to find me. I'll be at Sabatis Primary School and Oak Hill Middle School. Thank you. Welcome. We still don't have a motion for it. We have discussion. We need to vote. All right. We will do a roll call now. Scott? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bob? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Doug? Yes. Christy? Yes. Jill? Not sure she's out there. Oh. Yes. Thank you. And yes for me. All right. We will. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Um, we will move on to public comment. So I'll ask you to come to the microphone and please identify yourself and the town you represent. Also, a reminder not to use any student or teacher names. Thank you. I'll bring in the chair. <laughs> I'm going to need it. All right, glasses on too. Okay, so follow-up question from last week. Um, the superintendent agreement I've been looking on for that Google Doc and I haven't seen anything. Uh, what town do the superintendent agreement kids fall under? <coughs> And who, what town takes the expense, basically takes on the expense. And how much is it total that we need to come up with to cover all those kids? Okay, so I answered, I will we'll help you with finding the document. If you go to the budget icon mm -hmm. on the website and then scroll down. I'm sorry, I do have a cold tonight, so I'm going to do my best. Um, scroll down and you'll see there's an FAQ. I put a bunch of questions in there. Right, so, so I know click where on it, it and, they, and they're up. Yeah, no, I saw where they are. All right. I'll look again. I didn't see the, the, like the dollar amount or what okay. town it falls under because I, I posted a whole bunch of questions already. Okay, so the towns do not get assigned the superintendent's agreements. How it works is, when I talk to the, D, the finance um, person of the DOE, is on your ED-279, there are different parts. So the superintendent agreement numbers go into what they call Section 2A, which is all the weighted areas. So the economically disadvantaged or the ELL or um, what grade they're in. So we get that in the per pupil count. They do not go into the town assignment. So those students do not filter in determining the portion of the town's payment for their portion of the total budget. So we don't have to come up for, with the extra money under each town for each kid for taxes. Correct. Correct. They don't factor. So if you have an enrollment of and it's not going to be the top of my head, so I'm just using numbers, okay? So if it's 1,200 students, and then um, it's 1,240 because there's 40 superintendents' agreements, right? Mm -hmm. They don't take that 40 when they're determining the percentage of each town's commitment to the total. Does that make sense? I'll so, figure it out. Yeah. So, well, yeah, <laughs> it's just she said it. they definitely play a part in factoring how much money – the town, uh, you know, the total allotment is, but it doesn't go into the percentages of what's decided for the enrollment. All right, hold on, I gotta switch again. Okay. I hate progressives needing glasses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. the second is just, well, the rest of it's basically just comments. Um, it looks, we eliminated two teachers, and at the same time, we're adding more admin positions, transportation, nutrition directors, such as that. Um, I was wondering why, and I, I think I already posted it, but why we need two. And can we make it so that they combine into one? Because if we're having to eliminate teachers, we shouldn't be adding more admin. And then what are the 12 positions that we have at central office? I think I saw something outside. I'll take a snapshot of that. I want to see wh who does what. Um, and in the private sector, when I was working in the private sector, in the bankings, it, it said it, back then, um, we always had to multitask. So if we couldn't, if we didn't have enough funding or we couldn't increase our pay and we had to tighten up, we had to take on more tasks. So we had three people, let's say it was down to two people, I would take half and the other person take half. So is it, there's gotta be some way where we can actually combine some of the tasks together. 
Uh, let me see. Let's see what else I have. Oh, in the newspaper recently, I don't know, I didn't post that link. I was going to send it to you so you can read it. In the newspaper, it was in Rumford, I think it's Central Maine, if you look at the Sun Journal. Uh, the Rumford School has to decrease their budget. I think all schools have to do that right now, or, or superintendents put their information up. They have a special ed director that's retiring, and I think we have the same thing happening here too. And what, because since they have to decrease their budget, what they're doing is that the superintendent is actually taking on that task as well as being the superintendent. And I can send you the link for that too if you want to see that. I don't know if you have the credentials or if somebody else has the credentials, but just to take on more roles instead of adding more roles. Um, let me see. And I, just as when we're looking at all these different cuts, I can read this like this. When we're making all these different cuts, it seems like it's always cut a teacher, cut this, cut that. The students aren't gaining anything, but we're always adding more admin, more admin, more admin. Nothing against people, you know, you guys, but adding more chiefs and not the Indians. There's going to be, like, if you go down the street and you see uh, public works, public works is good for that, or a state, federal, whatever, you see them working on the road, you see all these guys at the top, all the admin, the people in charge, and one guy in the hole digging. So it doesn't make sense if we're cutting the little guy or the people that are directly working with the kids. It doesn't make sense to cut them while we're adding or more expense to pay for people that are not in contact with the kids directly. And then hopefully the cuts that, I know they're gonna be presenting the cuts that we asked for. Um, hopefully they're not in the teachers. I don't wanna see teachers go where we're lacking as it is and the teachers are already doing a lot. I know a lot of teachers, they're doing a ton. And if you take out more teachers who are doing already a ton, the kids are gonna suffer because of it. Uh, and if you do take, uh, every time we ask for a decrease, it seems like, and don't take this wrong, but it seems like it's a punishment. You take away stuff we want to keep, not you personally, but you take away stuff we want to keep. And it's almost like we're being punished for asking for a decrease in something, taking away from the kids. Um, and the other thing that really I, I really believe in is I know you have to propose a budget, but you should have, just like I have a budget, this is some I make per year, and don't get raises, whatever, this is what I'm going to make. I can't afford to have that brand new $70,000 truck, but I want it. This, I'm going to try to get that truck. If I can't afford it, I don't get it. So I guess I'm going to have to get something else, and I'll just coupon or decrease somewhere else. We can't just keep adding. Add, we can't afford, as three towns, we cannot afford a 9%, 8%, 7 We shouldn't be over 3 as far as I'm concerned. And all the other people in the, in the towns, we have a lot of elderly, a lot of older people that are on fixed incomes. Like I said last time online, it's not something they can afford. And it's not right, like people like my parents who've been in this town in Sabatis for 50, 52 years that they, I don't know what they're gonna do if they increase them. It's gonna be like a $600 increase in their taxes on top of the 2000 something that they're paying already and they're on retirement. So it just doesn't make sense to me to tax people out of their homes or out of the community. So I suggest, I don't think we should have anything over Every year, nothing over 3% or whatever the cost of living raise is, it shouldn't be above that. And you have to work within your number instead of this is what we want, then we got to decrease it. That's my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else? Is there anyone online? All right. Thank you. We'll move on to 6.1, budget discussion, continues with including our proposed reductions. Um, we're, going to have a, we're going to continue with our budget discussions this evening. Um, that will include a proposed reduction that Katie will be presenting to us. Just a reminder that we have tonight's meeting and April 24th to support and approve a budget that will be presented to the public on May 15th. All right, so um, let's get started. I'm going to just, I'm going to review where we are, then I'm going to review reduction proposals, and then we'll talk about next steps, okay? Can everybody hear me? No, wait. No. Can we wait for the presentation? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I don't. I know, you can't see. I can't see. <laughs> I have it perfectly in front of me, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I'm on slide three. Um, so you, we're going to talk about current budget proposal. Um, so can you go to slide number two? I'm um, number four, excuse me. Okay. So I'm just going to show with the superintendent's proposed budget, then I'm going to show the board's proposed budget, and we're going to move forward on that just to give where we were, where we're going, and, and what, the, um, what the rest of the conversation is going to be. So um, what I'm going to target is that, gr that orange section. So in the superintendent's proposed budget and cost centers 1 through 11, so looking at regular instruction, special ed, other instruction, st student and staff support, system administration, school administration, transportation, facilities and maintenance, and debt service, and all other expenses. I'm sorry, Katie, can you wait, please? Yeah. There's a, a window or something. <laughs> Thank you. It's gone. I might need you to just I give might. me this. I'll just have to stand watch here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to focus on the orange line, okay, because that's the general fund. That's the first articles that the public votes on. And that's what the number that, we're, that is first voted on is the general fund number. And then nutrition is voted on and then adult education. So I'm going to be focusing on the general fund, okay? So the superintendent's proposed budget was up 9.11% over last year. The, the board's, yeah, okay, the board's proposed um, budget from last week around the two teachers going back in the budget, put the budget, and again at the orange section, put the budget at 9.97% increase. So the two teaching positions that were put back in was $183,000. So when we calculated and went back over how much would the teacher be, each teacher be, it'd be about $93,000, okay? So 186000 um, so I want that's going to be our starting point is the 9.97 percent and we were directed to look at can you bring it in at 7 percent over last year okay so next slide so looking at the two the superintendent's proposed budget and then the board's proposed budget just showing you where we were with and without the teacher position okay and so looking on the right-hand side, we're looking at reducing $641,173.18 to get us to that 7% mark over last year. Keep going. So the overview is, I want to go over, because Carol, I think this will, might help you with some of your questions, which is in cost centers one through seven, there were no new positions, okay? The big changes in these cost centers, we're looking at what's funded in our federal funds right now, our a, which we call ARP. These are the monies we were giving, given during COVID time to expend. And there were two positions in there that we're looking to fund in the general fund, which is the assistant principal position at Oak Hill Middle School and an IT technician position so that we maintain our current um, structures. We, for our technicians, we will still have one for the high school, one for the middle school, and one that covers the elementary schools. So this is not an addition in positions, this is shifting how we're funding those positions. The other change here in these cost centers was the assistant superintendent position. 
in which we have changed the title to Director of Curriculum Assessment and Instruction and ESSA Director. This is a change to move this position from system administration to student and staff support. This position, um, we looked at the duties of the assistant superintendent and what would fall under this position and then looked at what would the superintendent be picking up, the business manager picking up, and other folks picking up. Um, the ESSA director title was added so that we can use title grant funds to offset the cost of this position. The third change in these cost centers was the dean of students. So we have its dean of student position right now that is funded in the ARP funds. But instead of adding that to the general fund, we took a teaching position that does, is not needed in the sense that right now we have four fourth grade teachers. So it, right now in fifth grade we have five fifth grade teachers. So when that fourth grade moves to fifth grade, they need four teachers and not five teachers. So we're taking the funding for that fifth teacher and putting it towards the dean of students. We can call it the dean of students or we can call it a positive behavior intervention support specialist because people often see deans as administrative positions. So although this dean position would be not year round and it would be more on a salary of a teacher, not an administrator's salary. That's the difference there, okay? But the middle school would still retain having three positions that support students and staff. The overview of cost centers eight to 11, there was one new position that was a bus driver position. And so this is to have a complement of drivers to support 10 bus runs and have flexibility that when a driver is absent, we have an automatic sub jumping in. And also filling other duties such as field trips, um, perhaps covering as bus aides, things that we need if all of our bus runs are running, we would assign those folks to other responsibilities. The other change is we have a trip coordinator position right now for transportation. It's an hourly position and it is not year round. So when we looked at how are we going to address the assistant superintendent position shifting to a director of curriculum who also covered food service. So we had a food service position need. We have a transportation need as well. So we looked at that trip coordinator position and we said we can make that a year round position and it, and it be a salaried position. The director of operations currently does facilities, maintenance, transportation, and emergency plans. So when we talked about food service, instead of coming to the board and saying we want to add another administrator, we looked at how does the director of operations responsibilities interface with food service. And it interfaces quite, quite well in the sense that the director of operations covers facilities, which includes the kitchen area, so they're already working with hand in hand to say what are the needs in that department. And also our custodial staff and our food service staff often interface working together. So this was more of a natural fit than a transportation director also overseeing food service when they're not, they're not tied together. It would be doing two completely different jobs. So instead of adding any administrators, we took current resources and we looked at them differently. The cost of that change is $12,000, approximately $12,500, as opposed to adding an administrative position for at least $64,000 salary alone. But the add benefits in that, it's gonna be more than that. So we're trying to be cost effective not to add an additional administrator position. It also will offset the director of operations um, funding to also be funded through the nutrition program. So we are looking, just like you're asking us to look, how do we take our resources, allocate it in the most efficient, effective way? 
So this was our suggestion. <clears throat> so a big decision over the last week, which was interesting, it came up at last week's comments from the public around our budget discussions, which we were already in discussions about. We were discussing, we have to think outside the box. Our budget is very tight, okay? Um, and so we have to look at what have we not proposed? What have we not looked at? How long can we delay having a conversation about consolidating our buildings? Making the decision to bring this forward, as I talked to um, Douglas about this, and I did check in with each um, board member I attempted to, um, to discuss what was coming forward tonight. Um, this proposal that I'm about to go through does circumvent the Consolidation Committee. They've been working very hard. We've had three meetings, and those three meetings have been very informative and play a part in coming to a decision on which building would we vacate. So we talked about vacating what I'm proposing as an option. This is an option, right? And there's a lot of discussion around this option, is vacating SPS, not closing it, because we don't have a long-term plan yet. So to shut it down, we don't want to put that facility at risk. When you shut things down, you're shutting systems down, you're taking a chance about leaving it sitting by itself. So we're going to still keep it running at its very minimal heat to keep, you know, pipes from not freezing, electricity, things that we have to keep going, have it stay online. And we'll work on how to best do that. So another big conversation was what, between Libby Tozier and SPS, we would all agree, they all have, both have high needs in the facilities, right? They have needs. Um, they both need uh, roof issues, they both have structural issues, they both have window issues, they both um, have water issues. There's a lot of issues, and you all know that because you just went through, are we going to close both schools and add to the middle school, which was not supported. But we all knew it was something that might have to happen, right? So then we talked about location, and that's one of the biggest drivers in choosing to go into Libby Tozier and Carrie Ricker, then split us again, Carrie Ricker and Sabatis Primary. And so we're going to get into the pros and cons of each of these. But I want to just set the stage of that. So we're going to vacate um, Sabatis Primary. We're going to look at that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. <clears throat> it would mean that Libby Tozier would be kindergarten and first grade. We cannot fit pre-K in there with kindergarten and first grade. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a map of the school. And I, I, when I met with the staff today, I want to make sure they understand this is samples. We have not sat and worked out all the details, like which teacher is going to be in which classroom. How is, how is each program going to best be met in these spaces? So I want to be clear on that. We're giving you can we fit at Libby Tozier. That's what this is, okay? Can we fit there? So I'm going to stand up as we go to the map. So this is Libby Tozier, and we took a different color for what the needs were. We need five classrooms for kindergarten, and we need five classrooms for first grade, and we need classrooms for special education. So, and for Title I and GT, other programming. So you can see here, bless you, so you can see here, we just, just for show of sample of how we would fit. Doesn't mean this can't change, okay? These are the five kindergarten classrooms. These are the five first grade classrooms. We would have to take a wall down here. Right now, these are two rooms. We would take down a wall. We have a special ed classroom here right now. We have to talk about how to best support this um, special ed classroom because it has some needs. We've got to make sure that their needs are being met. And then we have another special ed classroom here. 
Then we have Title I GT sharing these yellow spaces. And our specialists would be in carts. So art and music would need to go to classrooms, all right? But we have our gym still. So that's how we fit in with K-1. All right, so you want me to keep moving? Then we'll, okay, I'll give you all the information. Though, so if you have questions, write them down. All right, so Carrie Ricker. Carrie Ricker would have grades pre-K and second, third, and fourth. And I'm going to show you the layout again. This is one sample. It may look different once we, got, when, once we get down. So again, it's color-coded to ID the classrooms. So we need five second grade classrooms, five third grade classrooms, and four fourth grade classrooms. So we have the five um, second grade classrooms there. We have the special ed classrooms. We have the art room. And then we have two of the third grade classrooms on the first floor. If you know Carrie Ricker, this is to the left, and we're going over in that wing. On the second floor, we have four fourth grades. We have special ed classrooms. We have the third grades. We have a classroom here for Title I. So if we determine with that teacher, if we have those two teaching positions and we feel the highest need is for another fourth grade teacher, we could put it there. If we felt there was a high need for an special, uh, additional special education teacher, we have a space here. So we have to continue to look at the needs, not just make assumptions, right? We want to constantly say, what's the need, and put the people where the need is, okay? And then you can see the yellow areas would be for Title I guidance, okay? The last section, this is over by the gymnasium. Pre-K would go here. So pre-K would have their own area, their own entrance area, and then these bathrooms here have to have some work done to them to be pre-K appropriate. So new sinks, new toilets. So we've already looked at that. That's, that was done last Friday. So we're, we're looking at pre-K being here. The specialists still have their own spaces. They have their music, their art, and their PE, okay? and the library. So that's the sample. <coughs> the, the middle school would not change, and the high school would not change. So the next, we did a lot of discussions on the pros and cons, and you can all think of things we probably might not have thought of. But when we said, why does this make sense? These were the reasons that we said was positives. One of the big ones, and you'll see later, is right now our elementary has two sets of specialists. They have a set of specialists, Unified Arts, um, UA. They have one set at Cary Ricker, and then they have one set that is shared between Sabatis Primary and Libby Tozier. So you'll see an, in, the proposal, a not, in the proposal that does not include the vacancy of SPS to include have reducing to have one set of specialists for pre-K-4, right? So one of the positives for the two schools being side by side is there isn't travel for staff. They're traveling between Carrie Ricker and Libby Tozier, which are pretty much on the same campus. Less transition in our educational journey for our students. Instead of going to three schools pre-K-4, we go to two schools. More instructional time, we're anticipating we can align the start and end times of our schools because we aren't going to be tied to how long it takes buses to get to SPS, transfers, moving. So we think, <coughs> we're hopeful, that we can look at instructional time as well. More admin support. We're recommending a principal at Libby Tozier, a principal at Kerry Ricker, and then either the assistant principal stays at the Kerry Ricker, or we do what we're doing a little bit at middle school, is making that position a dean of students. So we're pr you'll see in the savings that if we have a principal at Libby Tozier and a principal at Carrie Ricker, we would have a dean of students at Carrie Ricker. But you have two administrators for support of those two buildings. A huge positive is transportation. So we have students riding our buses for 60 to 90 minutes 
um, in the afternoon. This would streamline not having to go to Sabatis for the elementary. It, so we would look at how to best route to get to Litchfield and back, um, <coughs> rather than some kids are going from Sabatis to Litchfield back to Sabatis. So streamlining our transportation probably will cut down time, um, be more efficient. And for our parents that have to cross. I know Doug crosses two or three times. Um, so another big positive is our special ed programming and our Title I programming. Right now, we have resources that we spread over three buildings. This is taking those resources, not reducing those resources, but taking them and allocating them to two schools rather than three schools. Really looking at the needs and then allocating the resources accordingly. Instructional planning and RTI time, it gives, obviously, those teachers are working on the same campus, more opportunity for that. We're utilizing the space to its max. So we're not going to hear from the community, you have rooms open and you're not filling them. Oh, we're filling them. They're, they're going to be at max capacity. Then there's potential to expand because it's on a campus and there's room to move. And then um, for the public, we are going to submit, we're going to ask the board for submittal of major capital project. So the DOE is asking for applications for um, major capital projects for new schools or doing, you know, helping old schools like our two schools. So we have spoke to Harriman yesterday. Um, their firm, and they can put two applications together. They would put one in for SPS. So even though we're vacating it, we're treating it as it, it's a building that we could possibly be using. If Litchfield withdraws, we have to have SPS up to speed because we're going to be moving all the Wales and Sabata students from Cary Ricker and Libby Tozier into three buildings. So when talking to Harriman Associates, they recommend you've got to do applications for both. And so they would work with us on that, and so we will be submitting that. We will not know where we rank until next June. So not this June, but next June. Um, there are cons. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Less maintenance and operation costs, which we'll talk about. Um, sorry, I skipped that one. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Um, the cons. slide <laughs> is specialists may be in carts at Lib will be in carts at Libby Tozier. Um, more shared spaces, you know, we're used to having some wiggle room and some flexibility. And of course, reduction of staff. And then we're circumventing the consolidation subcommittee work. I see that as a con. So what is that? So how much would we save? It's got to be a big question. So as I told the staff, who is impacted is not what's necessarily listed to make assumptions, well, if it's this, it's this person, not necessarily. There's a lot of factors that go into what, which person is going to be impacted by reductions in positions. You have to look at seniority, you have to look at collective bargaining, you have to look at what's open, what's a good match. So I'm going to say positions, but not, don't make any assumptions on people, okay? We're not there yet. We know what positions would have to be reduced, how that impacts employees we're still working on. Um, <clears throat> so to get to the 519, 732 is the savings from the assistant principal position changing to a dean administrative assistant, the LPN position, PE teacher, art teacher, music teacher, library ed tech, a day custodian, a night custodian, a network specialist. Because IT feels they could manage to do what they need to do if there's one less building. A food service worker would be impacted, but it doesn't impact the savings in the general fund. Where it impacts is the nutrition expenditures. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. So 
the other savings to get to this number, 537,416.16, is the maintenance. So we have to run it to a certain degree to keep it online. So we looked at, there's probably a $50,000 savings in vacating it. But we don't actualize the $50,000 because we have things that have to get done because of the vacancy, which is we have to pay a stipend to our folks that move if it's not during the school day. So probably people wouldn't move until the end of school, so we pay them a stipend for that. We have moving probably we have, to, uh, we have to analyze how much furniture has to come over. We don't know yet. We haven't done that analysis of how much moving has to be brought over. And then we have construction. As you heard me, Libby Tozier, a wall has to come down. And pre-K bathrooms have to be looked at. So we take that $50,000 and you deduct those things off. You have an additional savings of 17684 16. So together... It's 537,416.16. So then I'll show you the percentage. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. So this is the budget we're working with, with the two positions. Here's the total reduction. So we're at a 7.48% over last year. I'm going to keep going, then I think we'll dive deeper into this. So that's one savings is vacate. What if we don't choose to vacate? What are the other reductions? So that's what I'm going to go into. So I heard you loud and clear. Look at the non-position reductions. So we went line by line thinking, what can we reduce um, in order to make, you know, what do we need what can be put off? What doesn't have to be done? Okay. So here are the lines we talked about. I feel like a teacher. I have to go up to the screen. <laughs> but <laughs> so we went to the professional development lines, and we said no one would go to conferences that had a cost. The only way somebody would go to a conference that has a cost is either it's funded through title grants with permission, or it's free. Or the employee says, this is really something I want to do. I will pay for it. And then we left a certain portion for travel. So that if somebody did have to travel, we would reimburse for travel. So we left about 10000 or so for travel. But we reduced those lines $35,000. We looked again at technology. We do a really, I mean, um, our director of technology, Norma Jean, she has a group that um, meet to really talk through and they do this hard work. And then I go back to her and I say, I know you did all that hard work, but we need to do a reduction. And so I feel badly about that. Um, so we looked at IXL. We have programs that do what IXL does. So that would be removing IXL, which is an app for practice. We also have contracts already in place. So there are certain things we can't. Um, cut because we're already in a commitment. It also includes performance matters, which was to hold all of our student data. We wouldn't do that. We'll go back to using our Google Sheets to track data. We would not do online registration. We would not do online money. So things that were connected to PowerSchool that are add-ons, they would be removed. We looked at tuition reimbursement. We have $50,000 for tuition reimbursement for our staff. We reduce that by 10000 So we would do similar to what we've been doing, which is monitoring how much we have, how much has been spent, and um, go from there. The, uh, we had budgeted for EpiPens. Pens. We went back and looked at expiration dates, and we believe with our adult EpiPens we can make it through the whole year. So we have children's EpiPens that are going to um, be out, and then um, we have adult. But we can work with and see what we need to do with our EpiPens. But we'll definitely need those for next year, but we can put it off for a year. We have fuel, so Jonathan went back and looked at his fuel lines and reduced it again by 10000 There's special programming at the high school. 
the telling room and they go to Portland stage, we reduce that. We reduce library books again, and but there's still money there for library books. We reduced all supply lines by 10%, which is 24,000. Um, we reduced PE um, equipment that they asked for. Next slide. We looked at the BCBA, which are a contracted service that helps support students um, and staff with children with difficulties. They make plans for those, so they work hand in hand. Um, they're, a con they're valuable in keeping students um, perhaps not being identified with special ed or support them in special ed programming to be more successful. We've reduced that contract in half. A new scoreboard at the high school was reduced, high school furniture, drama equipment, and no field trips district-wide. So the field trips that they budgeted to go out of district, we've cut the field trips. In district, like Farm Day, was not cut because that's our bus is going right in town. Advanced placement tests, we currently require, if you're in an AP class, we require students to take the AP exams. So we've budgeted to pay for those. We're going to make them optional. So if you're in an AP class and you want to take the exam, you can, but you need to pay for it. And then we've left some funding for families who may have difficulty funding that. So there's money there for parents to access. We were going to have maintenance done on the golf cart. Um, special Ed looked at some of the lines in the general fund and was able to shift 5500 to the local entitlement grant. And then we're not replacing some bus cameras that was scheduled. So that totaled 273910 And when we get to the end, we do, you know, as you want to look at them, like we did before, a menu and a list and clicking in, clicking out, and where's the percent, we, we have that ready for you, okay? So... In looking at impact, next slide. So non-reduction, um, non-position reductions would bring our budget to 8.7% over. If you combine the SPS vacancy and the non-position reductions, it brings us to 6.21% over last year's budget. So if you combine those two. So the last one I'm going to go over is positions. Right, because we weren't at 7% with just non-positions. So here's the position reduction suggestions. None of these are easy, so I, I understand that. Um, again, reducing the specialists. So instead of having two sets of specialists, one set of specialists for our pre-K-4. Then looking at stipends, we reviewed stipends and we looked at six stipends. That's two of our tech coach positions. We have eight, and this would reduce it to six. Um, we also have an ASOP stipend that an employee receives. We would do that and our ski club stipends. Then we looked at the middle school librarian teaching position, and we reduced that to an ed tech three, similar to the elementary level. They're ed tech threes. The district requires one librarian that can oversee libraries. And so that would remain at the high school. We do have an opening there, so we would have to have somebody with the credentials. A special education ed tech position. So we worked really hard looking at everyone's caseloads, all of our ed tech positions to make sure that we've covered everything we need and we believe we can go down one ed tech for special education. And then we talked about the two kindergarten ed techs positions. We know these are valuable positions and then we had to look at, I mean at some point somewhere has to give. So we put the two kindergarten ed tech positions there um, as also an option. Those that reduction for staff proposed is 341,800. Next slide. So you can see if you just did the positions, it would be 8.39% over last year. If you did without doing SPS and you did the non-position reductions and the position reductions, you'd be at 7.12%. If you did all reductions combined, 
you would be at 5.62 percent. Right. So when I do all reductions, obviously what was in SPS and what is in the positions, we didn't count them twice. So we didn't count a position twice. Just so I'm clear on that. If you added them up, you'd say, well, it's more than that. We just didn't double those positions. So now it's open for discussion. I have a question. So you, in positions, you just touched upon that. So on slides not numbered, but vacating SPS reductions. Can you talk into the mic, Bob? I thought it was close enough. No. Yeah, you got to swallow it. Like a rock star. Yeah, huh? you have to put it right up, yeah, right up there. Right. <laughs> okay, so on the slide, vacating SPS reductions, it lists the number of positions, music, art, PE, okay, as part of savings for the 537000 And then you just went down a position reduction chart. Correct. All right. That yep. had... So these art, music PE yes are these they the same ones they that's the same ones yes okay so they're not you're not counting them Correct. twice not counting them twice so no nope. they're not in that number there or they're, they're not in, in this th number but in that last slide where I combined it all they're only counted once okay thank you you're welcome um. <coughs> That there's a lot to unpack with this. Yes. Um, just seeing it for the first time now. Um, that's that's a lot of serious information. Um, my first comment, though, I don't know how the rest of my um, board colleagues feel. I feel like your slide that indicated the board's budget was 9.97%. I feel like that is a little misleading. Okay. Um, yes, I believe that the majority of us, or a good chunk of us, did agree and would like would have liked to see those two teacher positions. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think we settled on just adding those and increasing the budget. Well, this is what it, <laughs> we've been struggling with. This okay? Is you said can you put them in and then equalize the budget, right? So. Either way, I, you either leave it, and I had to add it and reduce 189000 So when you look, and S Samantha, maybe you can bring up that list where they can select things. Um, so I didn't start with, in order to have those two teaching positions in, this is the reduction list. I didn't start there. Instead, I went with, we have to go up to come down, right? So the 7% number stays the same for both, the superintendent one and the board one. So it was just trying to show this is where we're starting with the teachers in, but we still got to come down to the same number. I, I it was a hard that. one to... I, I still think indicating on a presentation that the board's proposed budget was 9.97% is misleading okay. and untrue. All right. We can change that for... Because we never actually got through all the cost centers right. So to come to a final... Okay, so yeah, I, I would actually like that that be removed or edited somehow. Yeah, we I did, can put. Did, I, I did not vote for a nine point nine seven percent budget. I, I know one. I did not propose one. Right. I, what I was trying to show Nicole, and I appreciate that, is just that we had to come to seven percent, and that's where we were going. But yeah. I can I can relabel that. I think that. it looks poorly to the community from from okay. my perspective yeah. to say that that was our proposed budget. Okay. Um, so I appreciate if uh, you could we can we can that. work on that yes thank you um, my next comment had to do or actually I guess I could ask if there's anybody else who wants to go yep. Diane you can call on people I can ask first like I can say I'm done and then if there's anybody else wait? I'll raise my hand I again think, I think Bob had his hand up okay I'll I'll share so I just wanted to mention those two positions were already in the budget. They were positions were there. We had just left them out of the number because it was being proposed to be reduced. So they were in, but they were carried or they were in the budget line. They came. You, when you proposed a budget, you took them out as a mm -hmm. proposal. Correct. So 
they were in the budget to start with as far as there were positions we already had funded. So they came over They're already. in this year's budget. Right. In the superintendent's proposed budget, they were not in right. there. So those positions were out there. We were debating whether or not we were going to delete them or not. So I don't know that it was. It, it's not. It's not what the board didn't approve a 9.7. The board didn't approve a 9.1. The board said come back with something else. So, it. I don't know that it's disingenuous, we, we, but but that allows you to go and show all the reductions. Mm -hmm. If you don't have those in, you can't show those two positions as being reduced. Right. So we changed the title: superintendent's proposed budget and two additional teachers. Was the wording we just changed it to, Nicole? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you all set? And that will be live because anything linked, that one automatically updates. Are you all set, Bob? Yes. So okay. here, here's the list, just so everybody has what we're, we've got up here. So we put this together that SPS vacancy is a package. It's either all or nothing. And then we have the other items that we listed. So I started with the non-teaching positions, and then we went into the teaching positions okay so this is a document that if you want to talk about things you will know here's the percentage at 9.97 percent and then as you decide that percentage will move okay and if you add different things we can add different things Christy first I want to thank, say thank you for like shooting for the moon on this one I think we have challenged you to give us some um, different types of scenarios and I think vacating a school wasn't anything that was on my radar and I actually appreciate that kind of thinking so thank you Katie um, I do have some concerns on some things um, particularly um, with some position reductions I think looking at the specialists and the stipends and this shift to the librarian teacher makes sense um, with what we're doing but I do have some concerns around the special education ed tech and the two kindergarten ed techs for a couple of reasons. One, um, I guess I don't have enough information to understand how that will impact students. Um, with the other ones, I can say, okay, if we have one specialist that is doing pre-K four and then we have specialists that are doing middle school and high school, like that makes sense. They, these seem very direct in the classroom in a different way and particularly looking at just the landscape of education. If we have ed techs that are qualified that are part of our district, I would hate to lose those positions that are directly impacting students and then come September figure out that, oh wait, we have new students that we didn't know that we're going to need these needs. And also um, just knowing the issues that we have around coverage and subs having extra hands to be able to not only help in the classroom but also to provide coverage I just I'm not sure that that is the move that I would like to see um, also well I can stop there with positions and then we can get into the, I can keep going but I'm gonna I'll stop right now for positions I'm just I'm gonna have them slide up so we see positions so one way we can start is if everybody feels as a starting point, right, just as a starting point. If you agree to do the non-teaching things, we can click those bo boxes so you know where you are. And then as Christy made a suggestion, we can click on that suggestion and see where we are, and then somebody might have a different suggestion. Well, I mean, any all of these are all of these are difficult, okay? Um, because we're not touching the teaching positions, and you're putting those in, we have to look at other different positions. Well, I, I personally, for me, I would consider. I guess let me back up. I feel like, and I said this at our last board meeting, we need some sort of evidence in terms of class sizes to know whether or not there is an actual need. Um, for a high school position and for a fourth grade position or is there an actual need in the district for these ed tech positions and a teacher somewhere else is there not a need at all I think as a board we don't really we're hearing from certain folks that come in I think we hear from our constituents in the public that we don't want to touch what's going on in the classroom 
We want to make sure that our students have what they need in the classroom. And then you hear the trickle of like, we don't need administrators, which I could go off on another tangent of in order to have high functioning classrooms and high functioning teacher leaders, you need really good administrators too. So if we think about that, um, I don't know if as a board we need to be so married to this fact that we have to put two teachers positions back in. Um, if we had demonstrated need and an understanding of the impact that would, it would make in classrooms. So do, like by the numbers, do we need a high school teacher? Ha has the high school done their class sizes, their class enrollment for next year? If so, is there a documented need? If not, that might help us say, you know what? We might want to s allocate this monies in a different way. I don't think that we should be so focused on these two teacher positions, they have to be high school science, they have to be a fourth grade, because I'm not even sure that's the need. Katie, you've told us it's not. And I, I feel like we need to kind of trust right. that expert opinion. So, so I, I think a starting point would be the one position at the high school, like leaving in the elementary position, because there may be a need at special ed, there may be a need in the fourth. Right now, the fourth grade average mm -hmm. class sizes is 20. So we have to keep an eye on that because kids come and go and we, we don't know. Um, the same with special ed concerns me, mm -hmm. right? So there's some flexibility there with that position. The high school and um, Marco Alberti's here, Mel Gagnon's here, they can talk about they have done signups and they feel they can meet the needs of the students in science with four teachers. So if you're going to keep one of the positions in, that would give us that wiggle room and it would my as you can see in the list the kindergarten ed techs and the special ed, ed tech would be my first in yeah. okay because we're trying to get to the seven percent and so yes that's where i would direct it thank you anybody else katie i have a question on stipends sure um, having been in uh, schools before, I know there are team leaders. Will mm -hmm. that uh, decrease the amount of team leaders needed? No, the only stipends, th this is what the stipends are. The ski club stipends, two tech coach stipends, and an ASOP, which is our human resource. We pay a stipend to an employee, and we would work on how we would handle that. And what? You. And the Carrie Ricker yearbook stipend. Okay. Laura. Um, so just just a couple of questions, um, piggybacking off from um, Christie's enrollments. Um, so, can you help me understand with if the eighty kids in fourth grade can have four teachers, why can't eighty kids in first, second, and kindergarten have four teachers? And also in fifth grade with a projection of 82 kids and it's four teachers there. Like, I, I just, I guess I'm just a little bit confused as why there wouldn't be more opportunity in other grades. And, and then to also sit and hear, like one of the most frustrating things is when people do come speak and they feel like they're not heard and they're over and over and over again. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm the board had a couple discussions on the science teacher specifically um, and the fourth grade teacher. And so then that, then it feels like you're not being heard, right? So like that's, you're not being heard, teachers aren't being heard, people in the community aren't being heard as well. And so then where does that leave you? So I'll speak to what, where I think it's coming from, okay? No. The, the, the fear always is once we lose it, we never get it back, right? So I absolutely understand why the science department would say we can't lose the position, right? Because once we lose it, we lose it. Um, so the science department offers electives. If we, if you say we're going to have that position, I would look long and hard if that's where the position would go. Because what I'm hearing, and, and they can speak to it, is they will have to add elective courses for this person to have full um, caseload, course load. 
So we would add electives so that the person had course load. To me, it doesn't make sense when I have ed techs on the list that I feel are as valuable. So see what I'm saying to you? So anything, it would be just like the specialist coming and saying, we need the two sets of specialists. They would have an argument there. Because once it's gone, it's gone. I it mean, all of these, every time we do reductions, the fear is that once it's gone, it's gone. So I understand why there's advocacy for it. And then we have to make the hard decisions. These are hard decisions. They're not easy decisions. And I understand, I understand I, the dilemma you're in. But when I hear the high school and, and Marco and Mel can speak to it, we are going to have to add classes for a fifth science position. So question, question being on the projected enrollment for first, second, kindergarten, first, mm -hmm. second has 80 children yeah. projected mm -hmm. for five teachers. So why aren't those four? If so other grades can do four teachers. Because primary grades, kindergarten, first, and second, we shoot for 16, 16, 18 students. Okay, that's because of the age, the developmental. So, sorry, kindergarten through what grade? Second grade. And then we have third grade, you hope third and fourth, they're around 18 to 20. So as they get older, class sizes get bigger, right? Um, so our fourth grade um, right now has, okay, we're doing projected 82 for next year, so that's why the fifth grade is going to four teachers. The sixth grade has 100 students with five teachers, which their average class size will be 20. So at the middle school, with four teachers at the fifth grade, we'll have average class size of 20, 20, 19, and 21. At Kerry Ricker, it will be 18 in third grade and 20 in fourth grade. At SBS, it would be 16 and 16. And then our kindergarten would be 16 and our pre-K would be 16. The thought is, as you get older, you're more independent. Mm -hmm. um, and then with, um, I, I don't, I, I agree with Nicole that the closing of the school is a lot to take in mm -hmm. when you sit down at the table. And um, I, I just am a little concerned, too, with um, reducing, when I mean, you consolidate, you're not adding more hours to the day. So, like, those extra classes, like music and art and gym and all of those become less. Um, and, and lunches and things, um, too. I think at the middle school, when we added fifth grade, it, made lunch kind of early and you know it kind of shifts a lot of things um so i'm just worried that maybe some of those things as well will get shortened so instead of maybe i don't know how long gym or music or things are but instead of it being an hour an hour long or 45 minutes it gets shortened to 25 minutes or things like that so has there and, and i know it's in like a discovery kind of discussion i was very surprised to see this closing of a school when there's a consolidation committee that we've sat on that we talked about a few times of like, Oh, it seems like we're kind of taking a while to discuss anything on it. Um, and then all of a sudden there's a decision or an opportunity presented to, to do that. So that was, that was a lot. Um, and then as well with like staff, all cost money. Um, how many volunteers did we have, um, this year to help with, items in the school has that increased from the years before our volunteer pool the principals would have to ask that can they hear you sorry can they hear you on the there's a mic over here by Kathy. So our day-to-day -day volunteers has not increased. Um, when we look at our pool that we vet for volunteers, most of those end up being um, folks that we vet to go on field trips. So um, I will say we processed like over 90 to go to farm day uh, in the first week. Um, but in terms of our everyday volunteers, it's, it's 
no more um, than what we normally have year to year. Thank you. Um, and then I just, I just kind of think we've, we've received emails and things from, from people in the trenches, if you will, um, that the, that they made it through the year and it wasn't pretty, uh, with the reduction of the science teacher or things like that. Um, and so I think if, if the message is, good job you made it um i think that should probably echo in some of the other positions um as well um with the director of operations and things i think it's maybe hold on one more year i think we're we're shifting maybe too many positions with um the dean of students being kind of a big topic the director the food service i think there's just a lot of of positions there that are shifting um and i almost think it's kind of too much but too much at once so maybe a, a more like we'll do these ones this year these ones next year but doug um, i'm still trying to process to nicole's point too so uh <clears throat> i hate i have two questions so I'll try, i i the two big ones and i I feel like we're here to discuss the hard topics, so I just want to preface with that. And I also think that I know there's a lot that went into all of this, and it's not easy to make decisions, you know. So it's my questions are not a knock. <laughs> and I always feel like I have to lead with that. I, know. I just feel like they're also important questions that a lot of people would want answered. Um, the first one is... I am curious how this does impact the con consolidation committee because when you informed me kind of yesterday that you were going to throw this out there, that um, that was one of the first questions that I kind of wanted to just in general, if you could give me a couple, you know, like, My thoughts. yeah, your thoughts with how that, how it would affect that, and then could I still ask my second question after, or should I throw both of them out? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> should I throw both out right now, or should That's I wait? I don't know. Go ahead. I, uh, I don't I, I, I'll <laughs> write them down and I'll answer both. All right. The second <laughs> one, I, it, I hate to ask, but I know it's in people's minds. Just pull the Band-Aid off, Doug. Uh, well, if we're vacating SPS, and I notice you got a list of position reductions, mm -hmm. I find it peculiar that you don't have a principal on there. Mm -hmm. So Good I question. feel like that's something that should be discussed. You're right. People are thinking it. Let's ask it. I feel like I'm one of those, <laughs> one of those talk shows. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Um, so impact on consolidation. Interesting enough, um, the next meeting is to talk about space, right? Could Libby Tozier fit into SPS, and could SPS fit into Libby Tozier and Carrie Ricker was kind of on our agenda for next meeting is looking at the space needs and what can fit where. Um, I think it's a good conversation for the consolidation committee to still talk about the needs of both schools. Because at some point, the community is going to have to invest, right? So having a group of committee members that represent the communities is important in that decision. Because, um, and I think it's important Litchfield to hear it as well. Because the cost to upgrade Litchfield schools, the cost to upgrade SBS schools, is something that we have to have a conversation about. And... Because if this is a vacancy because those decisions haven't been made. So um, I think it will be a, obviously a good discussion in our next meeting. This came up at the budget. Where is the Consolidation Committee feeling about this? And what are the next steps? Um, it's similar to watching what's happening in Litchfield. You can't put everything on hold as you wait for certain decisions because we, you know, we have to be able to pivot. So. We're, we're going here, and then we're going to have to pivot here because there are a lot of things going on. So that's my answer there. Why are you not cutting a principal? As I've talked to, um, SPS has its own principal right now, and hearing that the consistency of having that person on site at all times to support that school and that position is picking up some district-wide responsibilities. Um, has been positive. When we look at Libby Tozier and Carrie Ricker, the principals are always struggling to be at the right school at the right time, right? 
So they're always in response mode of I'm handling something at Carrie Ricker and suddenly I need to be at Libby Tozier. And by the time I get to Libby Tozier, I'm now being called to Carrie Ricker. So it's really taking the model of what we're doing at SPS and moving it to Libby Tozier. And then leaving Carrie Ricker, which has two grades in it, will now have four grades in it with a teacher and a dean to cover those grades. So it's, wor it's looking at a model that's working and doing that at Libby Tozier. That principal will also pick up district duties like McKinney Vento, Title IX coordinator. There's some jobs there that that person is picking up. Um, so in talking about that, I, I find it hard to believe a principal could handle both those schools. I think it would be very hard to have someone in that position to do it well and feel like they're doing it well. Christy? Just for the Dean of Students, because you brought it up, Katie, I'm wondering around the title of those positions. So if we're moving to a Dean of Students at Cary Ricker, would we reinstate Dean of Students as a position at the middle school as well? Yeah, I have no problem with it being, with it being a Dean of Students at the middle school. Okay. I'm just telling you there'll be a shift in salary is what's going to happen there. Go ahead. I was going to say something. Um, I just, I was trying to figure out with specialists, how are you going to have <coughs> just yeah. one... You talking to the mic, please. <laughs> um, just wondering how you're going to have one art, one music, one library for in one gym teacher for K through four in those two buildings. I mean, you have five classes of each grade level, and one for uh, four teachers. So we have four. done a mock schedule, uh, specialist schedule. Will that cut down the time? We've looked at different times, but no, we. Right now, specialists are running between, what do we say, 40 minutes. Okay. And then we, um, what we're going to look at is um, we're trying to do it so they're at one school. There'll be one day where they're split between the two schools, but really trying to minimize. Um, some of the cons are you can't cover, like the whole third grade won't have the same planning time. But then we've got to look at how we're using our Wednesday afternoons. So we need to support our specialists so they have their planning, enough planning time and also create a schedule that's manageable. But we did mock the schedules. So does Libby Tozier have their own library? They would not. They, the they librarian would, not. would go up to Carrie Ricker when it's library time and go down. And then we can talk about can, is that me? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, am I echoing to myself? Um, <laughs> So, you know, we can always talk about can classrooms access the library with the library not there. You know, I've, I've seen schools do that where they have to work on it. It's not always manageable. So what happens to kids in life skills? Because I know Carrie Ricker has life skills. Mm -hmm. those, will those positions be somewhere else? No, they, there's classrooms for those. So are they going to stay in the same place that they are? The, there's um, the life skills where they are, if they stay in that classroom. Okay. It's the behavior classroom that's next to the gymnasium that would move, right. that would move for the pre-K. But okay. we have space for that, yes. All right. Nicole? Oh, Scott. Do you want to go? Yeah, I don't have a question. I just have a couple comments. Um, I just, I feel like we are, we're putting the cart before the horse here. We don't know what what the situation is with Litchfield exiting or staying, which would ultimately impact which school we're choosing to close here. And without the results from uh, the committee as far as which school would be most feasible to maintain, I'm not opposed to closing a school. I just feel like a lot more investigation needs to go into it. We don't know the cost of, we know all the buildings need some maintenance and upkeep, so which one is going to be most cost effective? Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I, I do like the, um, the non-position reductions, but overall, all these reductions just aren't setting us up for success in the future. They're just not. Okay, They're, These are great for this year, but we all know that automatically with benefits and salaries, 
we're already looking at an increase for next year. So what cuts can we make this year that are going to set us up for success for next year and the year after that and the year after that? These types are, this is a one-time deal. Nicole? Yeah, um, thank you. So um, I do want to say that um, I appreciate the hard work. I, I, I'm a little disappointed, though, that I feel like it was unfocused. Um, I don't disagree with closing a school. In fact, being on the committee, I don't know if this is proprietary, I probably would have said SPS. Um, but, I mean, that's still a very early decision, like idea. Um, we don't have all the full investigation. We haven't gone through all the committee information, um, you know, face value or, you know, what I know about the two buildings. Um, I think the community has been asking for that. And to come to that as the solution for the proposed reduction um, is a little, it's a little hard to swallow, I think, because the community has been asking for consolidation for over a year now, and it's like we only did that to say we can get the budget down to the 7%, which I, I still think 7 is too high. Um, I don't know that it's the right answer or the wrong answer. What I don't like about the answer is it's an all or nothing. And I don't understand how there's no impact to the students or the staff, not position-wise, but life-wise, like, you know, living in the school as a teacher or ad tech or, you know, all the different positions. If we're cutting those, if there's no difference in class sizes and we're just lifting and shifting, why do we have teacher positions and ed tech positions being cut? That is kind of like my conundrum here. I, I get the art teacher, I get the PE music, like I get those because those were duplicative with three buildings, right? It would be duplicative with two. It wasn't with, with three, but it will be with two. Um, but having specialists and carts, I didn't even know what that meant until <laughs> you explained it. Um, having the specialists go to the kids' classrooms, I don't think is the right answer. Um, and I would not support cutting any sort of needed teacher staff, teaching staff, because not just teachers, while adding to central office. And I feel like the way that it's being presented, and it may be semantics, you know, we're not adding a position, but you're giving, a, you're, you're, you're promoting a position, not a person, because I'm saying, I'm, we said last week or the week before, it's not the person, but you're promoting a position, a level, and increasing the n amount of funds necessary to run a central office and cutting everywhere else. Like I just, um, those additional things that you did look at, which I do appreciate. Again, I feel like they're, I feel like we're not looking in the right spots. I, I don't know that, I know I'm kind of rambling. Like I, I don't, I mean, you show the, the community EpiPens, I think they're gonna lose it. I think they're going to lose it. We may not need that. We have that. We, we have that. I, I, it's, it's, it, it's just they, they, they need. They think they need certain things, and I think they do. But they see that, and they're like, "Oh my God!" You know, what if my kid gets stung? Um, well, I want to be clear. We have epipens. <laughs> you know, maybe it shouldn't have been put on there as epipens. I don't know. Sometimes less know, is more. More is you're, less. You're either we, transparent or you're not transparent. And, and we we don't help that <laughs> cause, right? But. Yeah. So can I, like I, just, technology can I say something? Yeah, okay. go ahead. You can disagree. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You can say as a board, we aren't going to vacate SPS. I gave you 7.1 without closing SPS. So you can ignore the top one at 537. 
that's not going to hurt my feelings. Okay? You have, you have to take responsibility. Okay? Every time I come in, you have judgment, but you have no solutions. I can not at, do the transportation and it will save $12,500. Nothing else has been added to central office. $12,500. We can do that. But you're not going to have a food service the way, I, I, I don't know how to do food service. So you're going to have to wrestle with that. So I put what I believe can be cut. If you don't agree with it, then put something else up here. Okay? I spend hours doing this for you based on your feedback. Not just you, Nicole, everybody. I happen to yeah. be facing you. If I face this way, Nicole, We, we right? might want to take I'm a gonna, pause. Yeah, so, no, but I, I really think, here's the list. What do you want to reduce? That's all. We'll check it. I have no problem with it. If there's something else, put, please suggest it. That's all I'm saying. Christy? Can I make a motion to table board discussion and move to public comment? Do you, do you have to? Yeah, we can have discussion after. Yeah. So there's a motion on the floor to. I second. <laughs> to move uh, to board uh, to stop discussion about the budget and move to item three. Item Public three. I need a, second. a second. Nicole, second. I did second. Oh, second. Did you get that? Okay. And we'll do a roll. Scott? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bob? Yes. Nicole? Yes. yes. Brandon? Yes. Doug? Yes. Christy? Yes. I say yes. Jill? Yes, but we need to make a decision. We will after. We will after. All right. Passes. We'll move to public call. Good evening all, Jen Waterman Sabatis. Also happened to be the school counselor at Oak Hill Middle School, yay. So I have quite a few questions um, and some comments. Comments. First of all, um, this feels like we're kicking the can down the road even further without having um, conclusive information. Um, in terms of the decision for the November vote for Litchfield. Um, the next question that I have is in vacating a building or mothballing it, if you will, what happens um, in terms of the state requirements um, if we move children back into that building and particular requirements um, and DOE um, expectations of that building have changed that again we are kicking it down the road and we're gonna have to pay even more money tax-wise to bring the building um, up to code to actually have kids be back in it so I think that's something that's concerning um, going along with that ultimately it will be minimal to no savings to the town of Sabatis taxpayers for any sort of repairs that have to occur for Sabatis Primary School because either way, whether it's part of a school budget or if the school um, turns the building back over um, to the town as happened with Wales, the town is still going to have to pay money to get that in some sort of working condition for whatever they choose to utilize it for. So again, I'm not sure if kicking the can down the road any further is going to help us. In fact, I think it's going to hinder things. That's my opinion. My next question or comment, um, in the future, the state of Maine is um, only one of, I think, two states now that um, does not require CDS um, to be doing care for children 
um, through the school system. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is children who do not, um, they're not in the school system yet and they require identification and special services, that is done through the state until they are, I think it's three years old, correct me if I'm wrong. My concern is it has been put to the state legislature a few times now um, that they would prefer to have towns have to take over um, CDS from birth all the way through. If we propose these particular um, changes, vacating, consolidating, all of these things, we are looking at needing to have space for these children. And this will happen probably within the next two to three years, okay? So that, again, is a major concern for us because if these services are offered through the school district and mandated by the state and the federal government, we have to provide appropriate places for that to happen. That's a big concern. Um, the next concern that I have is I'm at the middle school. I have, in theory, three administrators, right? I have an, a principal, an assistant principal, and a dean of students. And I'm well aware that the dean of students is a position that was an ESSER-funded um, position. However, my question in my daily function and how it impacts kids, what I want to know, we're trying to shift the cost center by putting the Dean of Students into a teacher salary position. What happens to the level of responsibility that that Dean of Students has? Because that Dean of Students is invaluable to everyone from providing any sort of disciplinary issue. A typical teacher is not going to be doing things and consulting with and following through with any sort of higher disciplinary actions. That's one concern. The next concern is we have an exponential increase of students with special education needs of um, IEPs and 504 plans, okay? Students who have Section 504 plans that have diagnoses that require all sorts of different accommodations. This year alone, we have seen a a large spike of that. I know I have to do many of them. My concern is when we have meetings, when we have to reevaluate each student and visit those once, twice, dependent upon what the student needs, there has to be an administrator at those meetings. Oftentimes, the dean of student will take that place because our current administrators are trying to fulfill their responsibilities in supporting teachers to do better by our students, or they are otherwise taken away for other administrative positions here for meetings, other requirements and responsibilities, which are endless for them. My biggest concern is if we end up shifting this, what is the level of responsibility going to be with that? Okay? So that's food for thought. Um, I find it really fascinating that with the Carrie Ricker situation, that we are looking at, um, again, determining whether or not it's going to be an assistant principal or a dean of students for exactly the reason that I just said. Administratively speaking, to follow laws and all other pieces, how is that going to work? So some clarification on that would be super. Um, I think it's super interesting that we're doing the shuffle of the cost centers, and I fully understand why. Um, but I think overall my largest concern is coming from where I am as a school counselor, my big concern is the exponential need that students have for these immediate support positions of administration to support the teachers and the kids. The administrators in the building are always with students, always. I am always with students. 
And I will tell you right now, if you look at the data and the statistics of what the need is for kids now for mental health concerns, it is only going to increase exponentially. I worry about that for our kids because that is a major concern for them being present and able and supported to learn every day. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? My name is Patrick Redman from Litchfield. Um, from what I understand, the town gets first refusal of a building that RSU4 relinquishes due to what happened with Wales. Um, have you thought about asking Sabatis if they're willing to not do anything with it? If you can sell Sabatis School and then you can build onto the car the uh, middle school like you wanted to do a couple years ago with that money if you're going to shut it down instead of putting more money into it. Also, I was wondering if maybe you could look in the past records of the finances that it cost or if you do another mock-up on what it would cost to continue to use that school and separate the towns to the town school like it used to be. I don't know if it costs more money or less money when we change the RSU4, but that would be a good question because then you wouldn't have, you know, four s classes with 20 or more kids in each class in each school. It would be separated more per towns, and then you might have, you know, more or less in each town school. Whatever it is that works out, you might want to take a look at it if you're looking at finances because you want to look at everything. So I guess that's probably all. Thank you. We have Christine Garrett. <coughs> Hi, just to address the matter. Um, I, I don't recall exactly, so I'm going to ask the question. Um, what percentage of the budget is administrative? Could you repeat Can you what repeat she the said? question? Yeah, I, I, I okay. okay. So she was asking how much of the percentage of the budget is administration. So if you look at um, the cost centers, so so school administration is one million one hundred ninety-seven thousand seven hundred ninety-two and sixteen cents. So we would have to divide that. Do you have your calculator? Yeah. So. That's, yeah. that's the cost center that everything related to it, I don't have it, you know, all their positions only, Christine. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, 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 I thought about the issue about the overall cost, and what I wanted to point out is that on average, um, the Yeah, that's 
Thank you. So I think at this point we need to make a decision about maybe what we. Is there another one? Yep. Hi. Um. Hello. Can you hear me? No. So hi, first of all, Lana Hall, Wales. Um, thank you for the presentation. Sorry you have a sore throat, but I appreciate you speaking about it. Uh, we definitely asked for some changes and options, and you give it to us, apparently. And apparently it was a shocker for a lot of people. Um, when I look at our towns and our budgets and our you know, situation, I always look at it from like parent and child. Thing. So when I look at the school board and administration, I look at it like this is a parents, you know, we're adults and we're looking at it from that perspective. So when I look at, you know, your proposition, which is great, you know, presentation, appreciate all the like breakdowns and the cuts and pros and stuff like that. It definitely makes sense from some, you know, to the extent. But I want to see first as a parent, as a mom, when I look at my budget in school. So first thing I see is like, where can I cut? But the first thing a cut is what I can cut for me. Okay, so when we're looking at three towns with pretty, you know, we don't have many businesses here that bring a lot of money. So a lot of this burden for budgeting falls directly on the households. So when I'm looking at it as three towns supporting six buildings, five of them are occupied by children, one occupied by, was it 12 people you said? Okay, so for me as a mom, I would look first, where can I cut my own expenses without touching the children too much? And I think when a lot of us talking about administrative costs and cutting some of them, we're not necessarily, like this is, the, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, what can we trim? So I'm thinking, do we have a number, of what does it cost to have this building open? Because no offense, but I'm thinking, it might be easier to move 12 people and see what we can save there. Maybe somebody who can go remote. I'm sure there is a, I believe there is a space for like tech people right in schools and maybe instead of having tech person here, they can go within the school somewhere. So just a thought, what would be costing from that perspective so we don't put the children out, especially if we have to keep that building going still. So, um, have we thought about that? And what are the numbers and stuff like that? Anybody else? All right. I think 
Jill had made a suggestion that we come to some type of agreement. So maybe we could go over the list that Katie had up there that said yes or no. Maybe we can decide on some of those things. That Point of order. Since it was tabled, it has to come back up off the table. So that would require a motion to remove from the table our discussion, then enter back into it, the second in discussion. So we would have to do that before we could go and discuss it anymore. We're in public comments and until we okay. motion out. I make a motion to return to item 6.1, old business. Second that. Any discussion? All right, we'll do the roll. Scott? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bob? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Doug? Yes. Christy? Yes. Jill? I have no idea what we're voting on. I did not hear anything, so I am abstaining. No idea what we're voting for. We're going to go, there's a motion on the floor to go back to our discussion that we were having on the budget and maybe decide on some things that we can agree on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I say yes. So we'll go back to the budget discussion we have, and maybe we can we can choose some of those things that we think we could take off now that we can agree on. Could we start with orange and go line by line, please? All right. So let's do professional development and PD travel. So to be clear, there still is, so there still is um, funds in the budget to support some professional development, but this is saying that any professional development that is out of state, is that what you said, Katie? No, this is, if, this is to pay for professional development. So, yes, they could go to things that are free, offered, you know, by the DOE, things like that. So if mm -hmm. we say yes to this, it eliminates all of it? Correct. It keeps, we have funds in there to pay for travel. Okay. So if they, if there's something they want to go to that's free, they could go and we would reimburse for travel. Can we establish a process? I just feel like we're sitting here looking at each other. Do we want to like thumbs up, thumbs down, majority? Like, how do we want to do this? Do you want to do a thumbs up, thumbs down? Go through each one. Thumbs up if you want to do. So I don't. I don't know what there's really to discuss on them. Is are is the thought um, that people are going to pick through these or you just approve them, don't approve them. Like it looks like, and I don't really know, but it looks like kind of every area has been hit a little bit. Like drama has been hit. PE has been hit. Some facilities has been hit. Do you know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know the benefit of going through every one of them at eight thirty at night, but, um, so I think, I think there's, there's a couple on there, particularly field trips that I'm not sure is the right thing to cut. And what's not on there? That right, that's the other question. There. But what? I feel like we need to come, we need to make some decisions. If we want more, I think we need to be very direct in terms of what we want more of. I think this is a good starting point. Um, and I just suggested the orange because it is not people and it's not closing, oh, not closing, sorry, vacating a space yet. And I also have concerns about the BCBA because personally, just knowing the benefits of that, but it, it sounds like that is still going to be a resource in our district. Yeah, it, it, reduces, it reduces it by 50%. That's a lot. Doug? I don't know. I, I hate saying stuff that I don't know if it's a popular opinion, but it's, it, it is. Matter. I agree with one of the comments that were made, and I kind of, I. I said this last meeting when asked what percentage I would be at, and I said 9% with two teachers. I, I, I wrote down kind of, to paraphrase, I said, our current budget is a result product of previous years of cuts to budget for short-term gains for mm -hmm. each year at minimizing, to an attempt to minimize the budget down to at or below cost of living increases. 
and we're, we're going to just do the same thing again this year, paring everything down. The reason things are so expensive and we're at 9% this year is because we've been trying to be at 3% for quite a few years. And I know that I agree there are things that could be on it. I think a couple of suggestions I thought were kind of interesting. But I, I feel like we're just going to attempt to do the same thing, pairing what we can off. And I, I don't know. I don't think, I personally, I don't feel like this process is going to be very helpful to just pare this down. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know the public doesn't want to hear that we're at a 9%, but they never want to hear that. And that's why we're in this situation where this is this bad, you know, this is, this is pretty awful. And, um, I guess I needed to throw that out there. I, I think that's, that's the tough part, right? So like the local share, because people, if, if there was no local share and the state paid for the whole thing, you'd have no discussion, right? Um, so I think that's where it comes in is what can our community afford? Um, as well as, you know, we know that there's, everyone gets free lunch now that, that goes to school, but before that, it was like half the kids in the district qualified for free reduced lunch. And, and then to have so many kids involved in the backpack program, what was there, 160 families or kids that can't afford to feed their kids food so they have a resource available to them. But then you're bumping up salaries and things too, and then taxing them. So, I mean, like, what, who, what is happening? Some of that. Go ahead, Doug. Response comments. I just, I feel like it's like a car, you know? Yeah. We, we, we've cut the maintenance costs down every year, and now it's like, oh, this car needs a whole new engine because it's gone. Right. And we're like, well, here's, it's going to cost us six grand for this. And you're like, well, I only can budget 3% or you're going to tax me out of this engine. We're, we're at that threshold. Where, you know, I don't want to tax anybody. I, I'm not making, I don't want people to have a 9% burden. I truly don't. Right. But I feel like if we cut anything crazier, it's just going to, the engine of the school, the, the building, the, the vehicle of the school is just going to shut down. You know, like we're going to, teachers are going to start fleeing. I'm paranoid that teachers are going to start fleeing because we're going to 3% and there's other better jobs, pl other places where budgets are more stable. Like this is, we, I, so I'm then, very concerned about in 3%. theory the only way to reduce the tax burden is to increase grants, right? Yeah, uh, and grants we can try. I, I don't know. It's not that easy, I, but it's yeah. not that easy, unfortunately. I, yeah, none of it is. I guess I'm just saying that, like I personally, being kind of a realist, three percent, even five percent, as we're seeing on paper, to get to five percent, it miss. It's a deep this, cut. It's a deep, deep, deep cut. And it's going to take, it's going to hurt for, as Scott mentioned before, like years down, you know, like that. I, I just don't, I think the discussion going over each of these lines is not the real discussion we need to have. I think we need to have a bigger, more fulfilling discussion about this stuff th and not do it in 10 minutes, uh, you know, I, I guess. Bob? Yeah, so uh, a couple of things. Um, Doug's right, and we've kicked the can down, and it's going to come to roost. And it's going to come to roost even worse than this when the buildings start falling apart and we don't have any choice. So the ones that were built in the 1980s and 1990s start needing to have roofs and things like that, and not just the ones from the 1950s. Um, it's going to be major money. I I don't like a 9% increase. I certainly didn't see 9% in my, my retirement checks. Um but I believe, and I certainly don't want to vacate Sabata's primary for two reasons. Well, the main, I guess with the one coming up, if we're going to try and go out and get funding for these two older buildings, when and the state walks through a vacated building, do you think they're going to approve the funding request to go and do anything there? So that school is probably going to end up not even being considered to get funding. And if we need it, because Litchfield polls, um, then we're in trouble. And that's my other thought. And it's the same thing I've had with the Consolidation Committee. Until Litchfield makes a decision in November, one way or the other, all of our discussions about which school to go and close 
is kind of mute because it all depends on that decision. And it has to be a decision that's pretty significant. If it goes one way or the other by two or three votes, you can expect to see it again the following year, right, by those who fail. But so that's that's had, had one other, what was it, goes along with that uh, consolidation until they make that decision. I just don't want to vacate the school. It's while the savings, there's some savings there, and they're significant, 500000 half a million. If we don't have to, I'm not sure that the amount of money it's going to take to modify Libby Tozier is as small as they're projecting there. You know, taking out the walls in the bad, but redoing the bathrooms and getting them up, and it's probably they're going to find all kinds of things in Kerry Ricker that's not pre-K height, so that they're going to have to work on a lot more things. So I would like to see the vacate that go out and I you know I mentioned before I wasn't at the last meeting because I had a conflict the first Wednesdays of the month um, I, I think our responsibility is to propose a budget that we feel is what's necessary to provide the education our students should receive in our public schools it is the residents responsibility to come to the budget meeting and say whether or not they can support it, and if not, at what level they can support it. And then it goes to the residents again, after we can take a look at it and inform people what that what that decision would be. So if they were to cut 500000 then we would have to say, okay, before the referendum vote, these are the areas that are most likely impacted with that, and then let the residents who vote, the voters decide on whether or not they're going to support what came out of the budget meeting. So... I think we complain that there's, you know, what else is on this list? Well, they gave us what's on the list, and if you think there's more stuff to be on the list, then speak up and give it to them, right? They've done what we've asked them to do and probably much more. It's the board's. We get a proposal from the superintendent, and then it becomes the board's budget. So if the board wants to dig into the 50 pages of details that Nicole mentioned at public meeting, she's won through all those lines last year and read them and, and – looked at them, then th that's what we should do. And we pull out the item and say, take this out and get an agreement. But at this late hour, not the time of the night, but in this whole process, you know, I think we have to come up with either a number that we're going to live with and check what it is and just kind of leave it up to the administration to get us to that number and then don't henpeck what they say. Just take their word. We say we want it to be at 8%. 5%, whatever, they come up with the list, and it's 5%, we take that to the budget meeting. So we, you know, it is what it is. It's only going to get worse in the future. As town evaluations go up, uh, it, there's going to be more and more on the local share, and as buildings get older, they require more maintenance. And contracts, we have approved contracts. Every contract has got two or three years, with the exception of one, that we're negotiating now, all right? So those those increases are baked in, mm -hmm. and the only way you reach that is reduce staff. That's the only way you get the budget down, really long term, is reduce staff permanently so that you have higher classrooms, and nobody wants to do that. I certainly don't. I think our lower grades should have as few students as possible in them. High school should probably have more, because when they go to college and they go to a lecture hall, it's going to be 150 students in there with them, or they go to a a class is going to be a class of 50 or 60 and having class at the high school of 15, 20 just doesn't prepare them for the shock they're going to get when they go to college. Anybody else? <coughs> Brandon? At the risk of getting yelled at by Katie? Just kidding. Um, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> I don't have a good answer as to where else cuts can be made because going on a hypothetical that we accepted everything that was presented today and we got to 562 or 5.62 5 percent and then everyone said no where do you go now do we club libby tozier too and start homeschooling kids i don't have a good answer but i i don't know that vacating sabbatis primary is going to help but i i could still i mean i know it's not popular and that's okay 
I could still support 9% just on the basis of what we've cut out of maintenance and all of the other things that are just going bad. Having the discussion last year about looking at a boiler 20 years ago and now it's failing. Okay, well, we're starting to see the fruits of a lot of that stuff now. So it's going to cost something. I don't know what that is. But again, I don't know where the cuts can come from past what we've got going on right now. All right, so how about if we just do a consensus of whether we do SPS or not? Okay, a thumbs up or do you want to do a thumbs up? Christy? What is the thumbs up? I need clarification. Thumbs up if you feel that we should close. We're not closing, we're not vacating. Vacate, vacate. sorry. Vacate Sabatis Primary. Thumbs up if you support that. Thumbs, thumbs up if no. you support it. Thumbs down if you don't support it. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's oh, Jill. Sorry, Jill. Would you support closing, uh, vacating? Sure. She has a thumbs up. Okay. Well, I guess SPS comes off the table. We have to go back to what we we're looking at. Can I? Can I just address the Litchfield piece? Mm -hmm. um, I think. Saying November for the Litchfield vote is pretty um, far-fetched, far to be honest. Just being part of that, being an observer of what's going on with that committee, um, kind of knowing the process of what needs to happen. They need to bring it to the town meeting, which is June 15th first, and get a majority of residents to be there to even start the process. <coughs> um, so I'm not sure that there will actually be a vote to to leave the RSU in November. It might be the following November. I thought statute said once a petition was appointed. They have not done that. I thought they were petition to, no. for, uh, to okay. So my the information I had that there had been a citizen's petition to form it, okay. No. They only have an ad hoc committee. They haven't even formed the committee. Yeah, so I thought the ad hoc committee was formed because of petition. So that's not even something that would happen this year. <laughs> My understanding, I think we could confirm it with Kelly. Okay. So if the Sabatis primary <coughs> is off the table, okay, so let's just start there for a second. Where was I going? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. To get to the 9.14 of the general fund, mind you, okay, the general fund, we would need to reduce 189,000, right? So you would have to just direct and say, um, we're going to approve a budget with $189,000, $186,000 less, so that it isn't the 9.96, it's the 9.14, right? And then you're right, Brandon, Sorry. in the sense that <laughs> I have to make the decision for the $186,000, right, okay. So. That's one option. If you want to go lower than 9.14, <coughs> we have put a list together that gets you to 7.1, which is the non-position reductions and the position reductions. Okay. Um, so you have to you have to come to some consensus around the number that the percent that you're looking at. Some of you say nine, some of you say no, it can't be nine. So I think we're, we, we keep going around on that same topic area. So I'm just, I'm just throwing out some things to consider around the, uh, the 186,000 and where that is. All right, question. Yeah. If we take the close or the vacation off, the vacating off, <laughs> do we not also take off some of the positions automatically because we still need the secretary, we still need. That's that's remember that's a package. That's right. But you said you didn't double count those. Are the, right. So, so down here, can you go? Can you slide this up for me, please? So, okay. So these positions are not connected to the SPS. Okay. So these positions were on the list, not connected to SPS. So that's why it says you can't be selected with row number one. If we vacate SPS, those positions are included. Right. Okay. So you're not. Right. 
So these positions Those are the positions that are not part of the SPS. So the first four are part of SPS. The ones in the blue and below are not. Correct. Okay. But it's, 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 these are here. Can you go back up? Thank you. These are here, either one. Either option, these are here. We're still removing an R. We're still removing Correct. We would, we would have one set of specialists for the three schools. So they would have to okay. travel. travel. We'd, have to take a, we'd have to do a, a schedule for them to be at certain buildings at certain times. That's that. Has nothing to do with the SPS vacancy. So these positions plus the non is 7.1%. So if you want, if you say, we want these kept, we would click the others and show you how much it is. If you want, um, and we put these here as option or not option. So it, it's a menu, which some people asked for. We would like a menu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, so, my my suggestion to look at a number for us because we have to approve something mm -hmm. in two weeks, right, to get ready, right, is that we remove the vacate Sabatis primary. Yep, that's gone. All right. So, back up. There. <laughs> so, so we remove that, and but I don't. I believe that all except for the two open positions. Those directly touch and impact with students on a daily basis. I would like to see, the ones in green and the ones in blue. Removed from the list. So I'm hearing pink. Pink. Well, pink. So oh, you want it? You want you to remove these? I would. I would. No, I would leave those as re being removed. Correct. So, okay. so and then, if I check it, that means we're putting them on the cut list. So right. if, okay. if you right. scroll okay. up. It's, so that's and, and so so now that, what that did now to scroll the up. Yes. Right. No. So now it's showing that there's a ninety three thousand dollar reduction. Yeah, so be, so you gotta click SPS. No, don't no, click SPS. So you should probably that, just have no not, there, not yes, no. Oh. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying? She doesn't click it. It's it's a formula though, so when it's you a check formula. it, it feeds oh. the formula. When it's a check, it goes in the cut reduction amount, and it will give you the percentage. Okay. okay? All right. All right. So. So right now, all we're showing, that just kind of works kind of backwards, but it's like. So, with the 186, we're at yeah. 9.1. We can we can check them all, and you can uncheck them. Well. I yeah. Just, what would you rather do? do you well, no, check them all? as long as I have an understanding, so. Check right now, we're only that, with those two cuts. We're only looking at ninety, uh, hundred and eighty some thousand, and we're at thousand. nine point one percent. Right. So, but then all the orange ones. I know that there's some in there that people know more, much more about than I do. But if they were all, so click them all. If they were all, click just. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see point. the magic. Is that all? So that's We're all. We're coming down a little bit. Hold on to try to show. Yeah. All right. So now we'll see the top. We're at 7.84. So that's 7.84. Now, I would, at this point, defer. How about the, the stipends? Yeah. Yes. Can you click that? Click that. But uh, I, $6,000 million. Like that. Well, no, but it's not going to even change a percentage. It, it, all, works. it all adds up. Mm. Right. No. So. So, so that's that's kind of my starting point now for people who have valid reasons why we should put more money back into professional development or some of the other things. Now would be the time if we can you all started agree. started the, the ball rolling. Yeah, so that we can say, okay, well, here's a few more things that we don't want to have cut. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we want to only cut part of it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come, maybe we can come up with a number that we can say we can live with. We have touched non-salaried positions, with the exception of the two open ones, and 
if we have to add one of those, I'd go for the fourth grade or the elementary and not the high school. I would like to see professional development be put back in. I think we already had cut it last year and then cutting it again this year. Um, I know districts around us that are doing a lot of professional development for their teachers and we're very limited here. Thirty-five thousand is not that is not a big deal for the amount of teachers we have in this district. So unclick that. Um, Katie, what was fuel again? I forget ten thousand. It's ten thousand. I forget what fuel meant. I'm sorry. Do you want to we talk to that, Jonathan? Or oh, Samantha, go ahead. You you you've got it. Yeah. So we were able to lock in our liquid propane at a lower rate, and looking at our usage and that new rate, we were able to reduce. So, so that sounds like an easy one, at least, if we're doing this, if we're checking boxes. It's clicked. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't figuring that you'd have less at Sabatis Primary, though. Correct. No, okay. Sabatis Primary. Th this has nothing to do with Sabatis Primary. Okay. And you said the green had nothing to do with Sabatis Primary. Correct. The green is just positions that we're putting forward. So the library ed tech is just changing a teacher position to a library ed tech. Is that what it Correct. is? Correct. You're talking about row 29? Right yes. here. 27. Yes, it's taking the middle school position and making it ed tech 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think back to Would the profession. Would you like that checked? <laughs> what? Back to the professional development. Back to the professional development. Could I make a recommendation that we cut that in half. So instead of a 35, well, could we say 15? 15? Mm -hmm. Diane, can you? I can agree with She that. can agree with that. But then how do you decide who gets what? Well, we would, we would look at that. Yeah. We, we would prioritize space. that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. how, how, how many people would 15 help? Well, we would look at what the schools have asked yeah. for. You know, um, our PE teachers go to things, guidance go to things. There, there's different but things Katie, they put in. Yeah. But Katie, you still have a professional development and PD travel line. Yes. yes. So how much Correct. was it originally? We've, the the 35000 is for the PD paid that was in the that lines. Was, that's the whole line? Correct. Okay. So there's other funds in Title I, okay. Title II, yes. but we haven't examined those to that degree. But there, there would be some there. I remember cutting this line last year. What did we cut it to last year? We cut the tuition line. It was line. the tuition line. It wasn't we, the we went from we cut 75, the, we cut this one. to 50000 Yeah, we went from 75000 to 50000 last year. Did you year. use the 50000 this year? I wrote a, we got a grant um, to get $50,000 in tuition, so I did it. Again, the state's been reallocating some of unused ARP funds. They had a grant that was available for tuition. We wrote the grant, got 51000 or 57 uh, I think it's more like 51 um, to pay for it. So we actually, we didn't really use much of the tuition um, this year. Um, Jill did ask if we could add the elementary position back in just to see what the numbers look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're back in, aren't they? No, we, no. Oh, we said 15. We could agree to 15. So we're thousand. changing the professional development to 15,000. Okay. And then if we are going to, if we're going to eliminate stipends, yeah. I would like to put some money into field trips. Can I, can I just clarify real quick? Yeah. Do you want to maintain $15,000 or do you want the cut to be $15,000? $15,000 total for that line item. To maintain 15000 Okay, so you want to cut twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now can you go down and add the elementary teacher back in? <coughs> okay, you've done that. Yes. So then I just heard um, field trips. Yep. Just put. Uncheck it. No, not, not no? the whole thing, maybe half of what they're asking. Okay. And this is only for field trips that are outside of the district. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like what? Like so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Samantha. Um, like the gray animal park is a big one for first grade. Or main, main wildlife park, sorry, it's in gray. Oh, and go to the symphony for the older kids in fourth grade. 
Okay. GT. GT. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there any possibility of having parents who want to pay for things like that pay? I know in the past we have done that. It, yeah. Something can be discussed. But are we talking, so how much would you want to reduce? Okay. So now we're at 8.34. So who wanted to cut the elementary teacher? Jill. What? No, Jill, no, Jill, Jill said in. put it back in. We put back in. Put it, back in it was. Both of them were cut. Both of them were reduced. And now only one is reduced. We're just reducing. I think it was you, Bob. You said put it back in. I had, no, I said, I said reduced. if we had to put one back in, I would support the elementary. Right. So but now I it's. I had both of them out. You did. But and now somebody we put, else said put them in. That's correct. Correct. That's it. Jill asked, what would it be to keep the elementary in? So it was unclicked. What happens if we hit SBS just to see it? I'm just interested. Okay. Just because I know at the, bu at the public budget meeting, what the public doesn't realize is that they could come in and make a motion to say they want to see a specific number with a specific cut. And they, I don't think they've actually utilized that power um, that, that they have. So I think just if 5% is the number and people, and the majority of people are interested in that, that's the number of reduction. So remember, they can reduce a number. They can't, they can't identify how to do it. Right. Right. They would have to know the cost. Correct. That's not true. They can just they can just move on the total number that we're allowed and do it there and then we have to then decide which cost centers it comes out of. Nicole. So I think that's part of the challenge here. We hear different things different times. We hear tell us what you want to cut, we hear we're gonna cut what we want to cut. We're going to make the cuts where we deem appropriate. We're going to, we want you to tell us where to cut. And I'm not just saying tonight, this is how it was at last year's public vote, all three of them. So going down through and saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, I don't think is going to solve anything. I don't agree with 9%. I don't think it, it, it's okay to just say they have to suck it up. I don't think it's a bare bones budget. If we were able to cut this much, I think Laura said what, what's not on the list. That is my point. If we're able to cut this much, what else can we cut and where? Or do we, you, you know, I don't know how else to do this because we're, we're never going to come to an agreement by going, the, like, going through these amounts without knowing what they mean we don't okay. know what they mean can i add to so, that because we we have ski club in there but why right. like what's the reason behind it is a low participation and if that was cut why isn't um table gaming cut or robotics cut like what we don't know the participant was it based on participation was it what like what's the reason behind it and and in here is there more that we can cut and maybe add someplace else, but uh, just a, such a hard decision to make when you don't know all the details. So we looked at the analysis of what the stipends that were prioritized and where Ski Club goes to Lost Valley, we didn't feel there need to be that level of supervision. If Scott, you feel table tennis needs to be on there, we can add that. Table game. Table game, sorry. I, I don't know. Table game. I, like, I don't know. I mean, right, maybe, but, maybe there's 100 kids that participate in table gaming. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's worth the $800 we pay for that. I, I don't know. I, I put up there what we believe we can do. Mm -hmm. You don't agree with that. I don't know if I, I, right. I, don't, know if I don't do or know. if I So don't. how can I prove to you that that's what well, we did? We had a conversation. We discussed the different stipends. If you direct me to cut more stipends, we'll look at the stipends again and we'll reduce the stipends. Are you able to? I mean, is that... We're is saying that these stipends are priority. You can do anything, Scott. Right? I mean, 
if you say you have to cut the stipends in half, then we look at all the stipends and we say there's not going to be this, there's not going to be that, and we base it on the return on investment, what the kids are participating, what, you know, we've talked about it. You know, do you want to go down team leaders? Do you want to go down department heads? Do you want to not have chorus music? Do you not want sports? Do you not want, I mean, we, we do that conversation. I don't know. These are just the cuts I don't really want to see. Like Ms. Spencer put pretty eloquently, it's just too many chiefs. But. Then which chief do you want reduced? Doug? Uh, I want to, so there was a public comment, another one that kind of resonated a little bit with me, although it wasn't, it isn't a very popular idea, but I still, there's some logic merit that I kind of think is worth the exercise. <laughs> it's three minutes I, to nine, just uh, wanted to. Um, and we still have can we, to can we see what it looks like? I mean, I in the, my mind, it, moving 12 administrators to one of the buildings kind of makes sense in some ways. And I mean, I'm open to reasons why it wouldn't and reasons why it would, but is that something, because I, th I, I think that had a, a good point that resonated with me, is moving all the kids to another building. If we could fit 12 administrators in like two classrooms that maybe had walls put up or something, is there a, a law that they can't be in a building with the kids? I don't, I mean, just for that logic exercise, is that something that we could try? I don't or we, think we about can, Absolutely, we can. Um, we will not have huge maintenance and operation savings for this building. And that's part of Right, why because we don't have a custodian. We have a part-time custodian that comes in. The power, the electricity, we can absolutely give you the cost of that. Um, we, because um, I was asked this, yeah, I that, know. you know, you could sell the building and sell the land, and then that would go in the coffers. It gets allocated in a certain way, so we'd have to investigate that. It wouldn't be you sell it, put the money against the budget. It would go into, uh, I'm guessing, a designated fund or undesignated funds. Um, and we would have to look, can we get our business department together um, in a building where would each of us be? We can look at yeah, that. Yeah, and then we have to have yeah. where does the public go to check in and, and do yeah. that. But we absolutely can look at it. It's not going to have a large maintenance operation savings. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's probably the, the first reason why you didn't really enter. Right, it's that. not as it's big a savings. Building, Correct, area. right. Okay. But yes, we, you could say we want central office vacated and we're going to sell it. I guess for me, and it, I mean, we had one public comment, yeah. but I think that, again, a common threat theme with public comments that I are, is in my mind is administration mm -hmm. deal, getting hit in some sort of equal way as far as teachers and everybody else. And I just, I'm trying to be like devil's advocate for mm -hmm. all of this, I know you know, yeah, that kind I, of thing. So I, I think you. it wouldn't hurt to... I know it's more work. <laughs> I feel bad for this because I know you guys do It's not more work. Lot. It's know, what we do. I know, yes. but it, it adds on to the pool of everything. Mm -hmm. But it I does. would appreciate it if maybe you had something like that put together to at least yeah. present, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing, I guess. Bob? Yeah, I think you go back a few years, you'll find that that was looked at. There was no place in the buildings to put them all. We'd have the superintendent and one in one building. We would have the business manager in another building. And because they have to work together all the time, then it, it, there's just no place to put central office without splitting it up amongst all the buildings and taking a room here and a room there. And because, like in any business, your C if the CFO makes sure that he has his business manager team, his business management team around them, yeah. the C, you know, so they have to work together. They work together all the time, so it makes it really hard. There's a there's a couple that we have had out before. We did have IT someplace else. IT director doesn't necessarily need to be in the central office. Transportation probably doesn't necessarily be here. You would have to redo all the server farms and all that stuff and all that connectivity and everything. That's a pretty good expense to that. So there, you'll probably find there would be no space to really do it. You could move a few, but it might be kind of expensive. 
We had to have air conditioned spaces for the servers. We don't have a lot of those in the schools. So, but you know, they can spend a lot of time looking at it. But it has been looked at before. Yeah, yeah. and that's. But so when that's it was looked at, happened. we probably had a much higher student population. Yeah. Correct, but not. I guess sometimes even if things break even, sometimes it's the appearance just, looks good. Not just the appearance, but the uh, what do they call that? Like the you're you're showing that you're willing to take a the share, goodwill. a brunt of the 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 uh, difficulty. You know what I mean? So, I, I just to put we, it out we there, can, we know. can look at it for next meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. All right. So I, mean, I would. Um, I'm going to have to say probably you're going to have to plan to meet on May first. So if everybody puts May 1st in their calendars, you're going to have to probably meet. Okay. I will not be unless, here. Unless you have a number for next meeting. Um, so I was gonna, the other thing is, you know, Scott's got a legitimate point about why do we pick one stipend area and another. But none of us on this board has a knowledge about what the participation is. And if we tried to get all the information about everything that's in this budget, we would be overwhelmed. We you hire have professionals. The you have the participation. Well, but we don't though. have for every one of the individual mm -hmm. teams. Yes, it was yes. shared in our presentation on March. You have oh, on, on so the last meeting. Yes. No, nope. uh, the one before. Yeah, where we <laughs> for went every over club. Yes, yeah. The presentation for cost centers one through seven. It, but it didn't show every stipends for how many students were in each. For every club, or? for every student was club, it really? and every student oh, sport. That. Yeah, it was slides twenty six okay. through twenty nine. Right. Um, that meeting, I feel like we skipped around a lot, but the information was there and has been posted to the website right, since that, that I'm, meeting. I'm sorry. That, no, it's okay. It's okay. There's and so that, many things that we look at that we just oh, don't yeah, have the information. Yeah, there's a lot of information. And yeah. we hire professionals, and we have to at some point trust that you gave us the best list that you can, the school system can do without if necessary. And we we got to stop second-guessing. We'll never get to a number because... Someone's always going to have another question about, well, what if, what if we hire people to do this for us and they live it every day and they have much more knowledge about it, much more understanding about it, what are really needed and what's not and what they can get away with if they have to. At some point, we have to trust the people that we hire. If not, fire them and hire new people, but then you got to trust them. So that's the way it goes. There must be more than just participation because ski club at the high school is 16, but then robotics is 7. Yeah, I mean, civil rights is 8. So, so why that one? I don't Just because arbitrarily. Do you want to speak to it? I mean, we... we chose ski club because that that's the one where there's um the supervision needed is not at the same level but isn't civil rights in school the when the administrators looked at the stipends list and i asked the teachers union also to look at the stipend list and prioritize it was very difficult for them to um make decisions on those reductions so when we looked at that, they, they prioritized which stipends from the most important to the second most important to areas where we could reduce. So that's where we went. If you want more stipends considered, I can bring that forward at the next meeting. But I asked them to meet. Um, do uh, Brian and the administration, they all met to discuss which stipends would go forward. I trust the people that are working on this. They made those decisions. I was not asked to cut the stipends list by a certain number. Nicole? Um, I just have a quick comment because, um, Sam, I think you mentioned it was the March 13th meeting. It says I need access. So can we please make sure that when these items are posted, because if this is how the public is accessing this information, that it's tested or QC'd or whatever needs to happen um, to make sure that they have it. Is that posted on the website, the RC4 site, mm -hmm. that one specifically? 
That's where I just went to it. Oh, okay. for it. Yep. Instead of trying to, yeah. Oh, yep. It's not on the site. I'm not sure. I, I did test them, so I'm not sure what happened. And people have been emailing me, so I've been doing that. Laura. So I also just want to say that um, I, it's n this conversation isn't that people aren't trusting what people are doing with their jobs. I don't, I don't think any one of us that are sitting, or I am not sitting here saying that. Um, what the challenging piece is, is what our community can afford to pay because of how much local um, involvement there has to be with that, that financial piece. So it's, it just is hard to sit here week after week and the assumption is that the jobs are not respected or they're not um we're not trusting or we're not that like and i say we um just because we maybe don't agree or we have a question or we need clarification i just it just is really concerning that that continues to be well you don't you don't support it because you don't trust the people that were paying that's not it like i don't think that i don't think that's it at all that's not it for me personally um it's not but i don't trust that people didn't put work into this or they didn't do a thorough scrub or they didn't whatever it's that we need to be able to to afford it um and and if there wasn't that local piece of that concern of people not even being able to afford their homes or not being able to afford to put food on their table, just trying to balance those pieces um, as a whole. So I really would like to um, have that just said. Doug? I, I want to say, I'll piggyback on that. Is I, I definitely think the administration is trying to do their best as well to put the, and I, I mean, for me, I'm trying to, I mean, we're in a, a thought think tank almost, you know, so you have to put hard questions forth. And I'm trying to put them forth with just, they have to be, you know, we can't just, you know, we're never going to move anywhere. So I just want to, I feel like I'm already at the comments time or whatever, but, you know, I do appreciate all the work. Like, I know this is a lot of work. I appreciate it in order for me to do my job as a board member as well, you know, to make an informed decision and support a budget. And I feel like I can hear Jill's thoughts sometimes. I want to say that if I were to vote tonight, I'm still at like the eight and a half percentish range because I think that that's what would need to be done as of right now in order to have a budget that's still capable of providing for the, the schools and the education of the students. Because I know that she would like something like that to know where each of us is at for a percentage at least going into the next talks. But I'm definitely open to ways that we can cut it that aren't going to be deep felt for the school this year and years in the future. So trying to balance that. Christy? I'm feeling a little frustrated. I'll just say it out loud. Um, I feel like if it was about the bottom line in the figure, I feel like the administrative team under Katie's guidance gave us something that was really out of the box that could hit those pieces and bring us to those percentages that, that we've been talking about. And I really feel like we as a board need to be more decisive if that's not the type of thinking that we're thinking about. Like if we're not okay with, okay, maybe we need to look at our schools and look how it looks different. Like it just feels like we're, we're talking in circles and I'm not even the one that's doing all of the work to like put these things together and Katie checked in with us ahead of time. So like, I don't know, I'm just feeling a little frustrated of the process and it's been the last three or four meetings that we're just kind of going around and around of like, well, this isn't good enough, but we're not going to tell you what's good enough. And then something's presented to us and we're like, oh no, not that. Like, it just doesn't feel, I don't, and I don't know how to get the, like through that. To get on the same page. Yeah, that, and it's just feeling like a repeat. And I said this the last time, like it just feels like a repeat of the process. Like, is it about the money? Is that where our bottom line is? If so, I think we need to make tough decisions. And I, I understand that none of them are going to be easy, but if we're not going to make decisions, we need to at least get on the same page to direct folks to help us make the decisions. 
they'll just say that. So do we want to come to the decision of giving Katie a number, a percentage that we want her to be at for next time? That's what because we did. We just, that's what we did. And she did that for us. And yeah, we haven't I, made any decisions. So I'm, I'm not sure that that's the right. I don't know. And because we, she's telling us we need a May, we're going to need a May first meeting. I'm not here. Bob's not here. Bob's not here. And I'm not here. So, so we have one more meeting to come to a decision. Mm -hmm. Send what to the voters? Whatever she decides. Second. I said that two meetings yeah. ago. I, I, I mean, I said it last meeting. I just said it now. I'm at eight, I think, eight and a half without making um, any of these cuts are crazy to me. The, the, I think they're impactful. And I'm at eight and a half. And I think the voters, if they want less, they're going to have to force everybody to make the really hard decisions because I don't think I can bring myself to cut a lot of these things that I think are important. So I, I'm at eight and a half. If we're doing a vote right now, I. Is that with or without the? I can't it's see. not a fourth grade teacher, it's an elementary teacher. It's, it's elementary. elementary. Yeah. Just elementary. It's down what, at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I mean, at the end of the day, people just care about what their taxes are going to be. That's right. exactly okay. right. So this is 8.34. Put the teachers in, take things out, put stuff in, just send it to the voters. They're going to tell you yes or no. Which is always, it's cool. always typically the discussion, right, is what is my taxes impacted? How much do, do locally do I have to pay? So it, it is ultimately about yeah, they, the dollar. They're not going to care about EpiPens, okay? okay. They're going to care about cool. how much is my tax going on. I, right. I remember one very vocal person at the <laughs> last budget meeting, and they said they actually voted to increase the teacher pay range because they said as long as they knew that what their money was going for, they're willing to pay it. So I think that it's funny that we're, we, I, again, that's what, the only reason that I'm willing to even entertain ideas about the administrative building and stuff, because th there were two things they said. They support teachers, and they don't, don't, they feel strongly about administration. I feel like if we can show that administration is going to feel the pain just as much as every other education professional in that the 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 then the money is not the issue and that's what was said by quite a few people that were very vocal at that that meeting but then it that was the money does not matter two percent you know right, right. we were in was right we're at one point seven like that one cost center was increased by how much i have it yeah but course, then the, the other cost centers were cut <laughs> right so it was about the money because ultimately overall yeah, yeah, they cut it from right. the buildings, right. and then that's where we're at now. So yeah. it sounds like let's summarize because we still have agenda items. So am I hearing right now, still bringing the central office concept? Am I, do people want the central office concept? Can I see a thumbs on that? People, do you want me to work on relocating central office? Oh, not relocating. Well, Putting well, together a proposal of costs yes. with selling a building. I don't know about selling a building. I, I mean, in a week, two weeks, I don't know if I can get a realtor out here to do all that. Yeah. Okay, it's but I can, plan. yes. All right, so, but 23 million, is it this number that you would, you want to vote on at the next meeting? Can I see the bottom? Okay, yes, you may see the bottom. It's just, yeah, I, you know, you want to know whether the teacher is in or not? Yes, I do. Yes. yes. It, is. it is. Yes. So the elementary's in, the high school's not. Right. Okay. okay. So let's go back up. Is this the number you want to vote on at the next meeting? I would vote on that number. And, and send this to the public. With an 8.34 percent. Right. Maybe. Well, yeah. that basically well, I mean, that's what I guess I'm. I'm not clear. At first, you said send a. You want to vote on a number yeah. next time. Do you want? Because now I'm not sensing you want to do that. So we're back to the beginning. Okay. So it sounds like we're going to go to. We're going to do a budget discussion at the next meeting and see where we are. And we'll go back to the agenda. Okay. Can we go back? Do we need a motion for that? So, 
we're we're done discussion of budget. So. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to give a number, and having this information is great because if they cut it, you're already done the work to tell them what they're going to lose. So before it goes to referendum, you can educate people on what the new number that's given this is going to result in, in loss in the school system. All right. So that work has been done. But you got it. it. So if you think it's not going to fly, give them a number. Give them this number. If we agree that this is kind of what should be left in there or taken out, take this number, take it to the budget meeting, let them modify if they want to, and then once we see how much they modify it, then we come back and we educate the public on what does that cut mean as far as staff losses or program losses. And then when they go to the referendum, they can decide whether to approve the budget meeting number or not. So this work is not in vain, but we need to have a number to take to the budget meeting, be able to get up and say, here's what we've cut from the original proposal. This is, you know, and this is what we think the board's proposal is, what we think we need to provide a good education for our students and let them massage it. If they massage it, then we can tell them and everybody else exactly well if you take that much out this is exactly what we're going to lose bing 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 so when they go to the ballot box they can make an informed decision because you do have to understand we have to if we take what you're saying bob everything that we reduce we have to filter that through the cost centers because when you approve the budget we have to notify the towns by article by the costs for that so it's it's not just one number i need we're going to make the decision on where the cuts are for those numbers by what you say because we haven't changed those cost centers to reflect any of this and that has to be done Doug I'll start I'm at, I I guess for to move this along I'm at the 8.34 percent I would give a thumbs up and I I still just would like the, the admin that so I Put my vote I think out. That's what we all. Yep. I need a motion on the floor, though, so we can go beyond, so we can finish what we had. Are we going to? Yeah. Do we want to go right. ask if we if we want the number to come back at next meeting for approval? All it right. doesn't have to be, but that's the amount that would come to the floor to start. All right, Scott. What would you like to see for next time? Would you like that number to come back lower or what for next time? The eight point three four percent. I think there's wiggle room. I'd like to see it come down. Okay, to Laura. To, to what amount? <laughs> you want to know? <laughs> yeah. No, give it. Uh, five and a half percent. That's that's up from my last one of four. Just so you know. Laura. Half. That's we did everything. It's five point six three. You come back to me, <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> I can't pass. <laughs> uh, only one pass allowed, and Laura stole it. Um, <laughs> so I think looking at last year's fiscal year and I was hoping to be prepared to do this with all the line items and help out, but um, we haven't been able to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. There's just too much discussion, which is great discussion. Um, but I would say 22. My number is 22 million. So I have no idea what, what the percentage does is. that make it, Sam? Oh, okay. And I'm I'm, Seven. I'm Seven. only being generous because of the um, difference with insurance. That's re uh, otherwise I'd say um, twenty million, Bob? which is reduced. I would I would vote to take the eight point three four to the to the budget. I would vote for that as well, Brandon. I would vote for the eight three four. Doug. I, eight, three, yeah, four. I said it. Eight three four. Chris. Jill, is she still Jill's on there? Jill's on, the Jill's on an airplane. That's what I thought. All right. Back to Laura. Back to Laura. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I think 
I do think that eight, anything, I think anything over five is going to be tough. Um, I think, I, I do think it's going to, it's the local number and I think it's the impact to taxes that are going to have people questioning a lot of items um, as well. So people that don't do sports are going to question sports. People that don't do other activities are going to question those and um, and all over. So I think, um, you know, I kind of think anything over that five is going to be is going to be a challenge. I don't know. That's helpful with with people looking at less than eight and then some looking at eight. Um, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. I don't want to see any reduction to anything for kids. I think it, it's a tough spot. But. We all set? All right. Now we so, so you had a majority that would approve maj it. Yeah, we have a majority. All right. I need a motion on the floor, though, to uh, continue the meeting because we're beyond the 9 o'clock. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Can we just move it to the next meeting? Is there stuff that has to be done? Just reports. Just Can't, reports. Couldn't we just move the reports to May 1st? Or I think you just have to vote no now and then. Yeah. There's a motion. Yeah. No, if we just, can just, I'll, just I'll just re retract my motion. Second, then we don't have anything to allow us to go beyond. So you just adjourn the meeting. Mine would be quick. But it's fine. All right. Without any objection, the board chair just clears the meeting adjourned at. 923 did we vote 925 oh, did I'm we vote on it he withdrew his motion